Good day. Welcome to the only channel on YouTube where year to year you can hear the difference in my voice because goddamn it's the only time I ever upload. For all those wondering what in the actual hell could have awoken me from my eternal slumber, it's the summer update. The Team Fortress 2 summer update that just cause so consequently happens to happen on my birthday. <laughs> Say happy birthday right now. This summer, we've gotten 10 new maps. Holy shit. A new cosmetic case, 4 new taunts, and 38 unusual effects. Wow, we really need all those. <laughs> we'll get to them later but before we begin with any part of the review subscribing and leaving a like would help this channel very much now on to the reviews so i've split all the elements into different categories and all the individual elements will be graded from 1 to 10 as well as the categories and then i'll give the entire update a rating So for the maps, I will mostly be looking at the cosmetic and design features as I have barely gotten any hours in because I quite literally just woke up to the update. If I did even get some hours in, let's be fair, I am no game design and balance genius so you probably wouldn't hear anything good about those aspects from me. The first map. Embargo is actually kind of wild. First off, it has quite a bit of lore about a dictator laundering money so he can stop mining operations, as well as some of the most V-script usage I've seen ever. The payload is firstly delivered in a helicopter, then put into an armored truck which turns into the payload and then is brought into a room where it, instead of exploding normally explodes into a bunch of paint. Other than that, it boasts a strong Latin American visual identity which we haven't seen from many TF2 maps. And with all that in mind, and how unique of a map it is, I give Embargo a very strong 9.5 out of 10. Next up is Odyssey, a very, very beautiful map with an extremely interesting layout. Set on an isolated Greek island full of ancient ruins, it was deemed the perfect place for Red to excavate their marble. Blue's mission then is to deliver a payload downhill and under the marble cutter in hopes of destroying its saw blades and ending Red's operation. The only problem I have with the map is that with all the white marble, we lack a lot of team coloration on many parts of the map. This problem, however, isn't that great and with all all the creativity that has gone into this map, I cannot give it lower than 8.5 out of 10. So Megaton is the third map now that is set on an island this update. Layout wise, it is extremely tiny and simple, yet that is exactly what makes it amazing. 90% of its elements are visible at all times and the visual design is done in such a way to complement exactly that. It looks extremely warm and cozy and is a, dare I say it, haven for friendlies and pyro sharks alike. It is very neat and I give it 8 out of 10. Now we have Cacoyera, another map tied to the dictator El Comandante, and also another exceedingly simple one. This time, the blue team is sent to seize a shipment of weapons from red. Visually, it looks like a calm pier with nothing to hide, which is exactly why El Comandante hides his secret doomsday facility right there. Oh yeah, and we can also not forget the piranhas that kill you when you jump into the water. I'm giving Kakoyera a 7.5 out of 10. From Crash, the famous map maker, comes the map Overground. The visual design is very strong and thorough with this one. It wears its wines and worn down look proudly. However, as is the case with most attack defend maps, it is extremely and painfully choky. With all that in mind, for me, Overgrown is a very strong 7.5 out of 10. 
the map Hadal? 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 I, I don't know. Features an underwater research facility and plays much like CP Steel. Visually, it is pretty good, but compared to the other maps, it's actually rather basic. And with the gameplay loop being much like that of CP Steel, you can imagine that not everyone is going to be a very big fan. Now, I do know that this rating might be a bit harsh, but with the quality of the other maps, for me, it's a 6.5 out of 10. Okay, so Applejack has got to be one of the coziest looking TF2 maps with all of its nice, cozy, soft, midday orange tones. Of course, I could not imagine a better occupant of this space than two mercenary groups hired by two different shady companies fighting over intel. Oh yeah, and you can imagine people are going to complain that it's a CTF map. Jokes on you, CTF is my favorite game mode. Applejack is getting a nice ripe red 8 out of 10. Speaking of my favorite game modes, my second favorite game mode is player destruction and Atom Smash is a perfect map for it. Now, if I am not mistaken, Atom Smash has the same layout as Monster Bash from the Halloween update a few years back. And with that in mind, the layout is actually rather basic, but it is good. It serves its purpose. The main thing that makes Atom Smash so good is its aesthetic which is heavily inspired by the classic Half-Life. However, that is also not what makes this map so great. What makes this map so great is the fact that its announcer is Dr. Kleiner. It starts with... Objectively, 8.5 out of 10. However, do know, this is my favorite map. 5 CP. Canaveral, Canaveral, this is the second time I cannot pronounce a map name, is a map that boasts the theme, what if two mercenary teams fight over a rocket launch, which is nothing new, but on tropical paradise. Honestly, with all the other themes being so compelling and so deep, this one just feels rather basic. Good, but basic. One big positive I do have to mention is that I d believe there is no single part of this map that offends the TF2 art style in any way. I'm giving Boom Beach over here a nice old 7 out of 10. And now ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Borghausen, the first totally unique non reskin medieval map in 14 years this map lives and dies by its medieval crowded town aesthetic oh yeah and not to mention to my knowledge it is the first medieval attack defend map with multiple stages I could sing Borghausen's praises for days, but we've still got a lot to go through. For me, it is a 9 out of 10. For this summer update, we have got the single most creative set of maps we've seen yet. However, I feel like it is a crime that we have not gotten some more new options for versus Saxton Hale, but I feel that it is not a deal breaker. This year, from me, the maps get a very, very solid 8.5 out of 10. The next category up for review are the cosmetics from the new case. However, before I start with anything, I heavily advise you to boycott this year's case. Valve needs to learn that they can only sell us a fully functional product. We must speak out in the best way we can, by hurting their bottom line. With that out of the way, I will give my most brief explanation behind my rating for every single cosmetic. Let's go! 
This will be Bill's hat in 2014. The soldier really lacked something like this, I genuinely like it. Aesthetic, unexplored for Pyro before this, and likely a good alternative for more expensive options. Listen, listen pal, I know you love MF2. But we are boycotting this case, okay? Stay strong, goon heavy. When you're 11 PhDs in but still unemployed. Ah, hell no. Large desk engineer. Medic health heavy is wet. So this is what the bots have resorted to after the recent ban wave. Rather basic, but quite a lot of bang for your buck. Eh, uh, painfully basic. Where's long leggings? for over a decade and a half, and yet his legs look better than mine. Nothing special. Bruh. We already have this. You can get the man out of Texas, but you can never get the Texas out of the man. I have one of these sitting somewhere around here. I could say that this is the same thing we just saw for Heavy, but there could also be a British person holding me at gunpoint. You never know. I can't tell if he's on vacation or an LAPD officer trying to disguise himself. Oh, that's a nice little cap for the pyro. I sure hope it's not something stupid like assassin grade. Oh, wait a second, it is. Gordon, that dropship's coming right for us. Ooh, very sleek. Fun fact, in the original Half-Life, the HEV suit gives you morphine whenever you take damage, but only every half an hour. I feel like this one does it every time. Finally, this little fella is very creative. We don't have something on the ground following you, sort of like a pet, if I'm not mistaken. This is the first time we've ever gotten something like it. And plus, it has a beverage for every single class. It's so nice, it may not fit in any cosmetic case, but I love it. Now, having gone through all of the cosmetics, some are very good, some are forgettable. This is not the best case ever, but it is decent and I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10. Now, we will take a look at the four new taunts. First up is the soldier taunt can it and i have to say it could be considered a little bit toxic but it definitely serves its purpose though a bit over the top it's still very creative 7 out of 10. cremator's condolences is for when a free-to-play pyro with two hours on record fucking random crits a lifetime spy main it's less over the top same purpose as can it 8 out of 10. straight shooter tutor yeah i'm starting to see a trend with these taunts so it's less over the top than can it but a bit more over the top than Cremator's Condolences, 7.5 out of 10. Unleashed Rage is an all-class taunt with a rage variant for every single class, and I have to say, for that, it is probably one of the biggest bang-for-your-buck taunts this update. I especially like the Engineer Rage, I think it's the best one out of all. For me, it's an 8.5 out of 10. Overall, the taunts this year, albeit a little bit toxic, are pretty good. For me, they're getting a 8 out of 10. And now, it's on to the dreaded section. And, as so happens, the final one. Unusual effects. The reason I say they are dreaded is because, firstly, we have gotten 38 of them. That would be impossible to rank word for word. And secondly, they are an extremely unnecessary and unwanted addition to the game. We do not need any more unusual effects. Due to this, I've decided on two things. Firstly, I'll be looking only at the hat unusual effects, so no taunt unusual effects. And secondly, due to how bad, gruesome, and useless of an addition they are, I'm going to relegate them to the worst pit of hell, a tier list. The tier list should be on your screen right now, and my thought process behind it was that we have some that are going to be extremely low-end effects, some that are just copies of effects that already exist and we just don't need duplicates, 
some that just aren't that noticeable, some that are very situational, but also some that are very good and are a decent addition to the pool, but man, we just do not need any more unusual effects. They are supposed to be rare and special, and yet we have our faces stuffed with unusual effects every single update. So with all the negativity in mind, I'm giving the unusual effects a 5.5 out of 10. Please don't add any more ever again. Ooh, that was a lot of reviewing and personal opinions. And, well, having gone through all the categories, having given them all a rating, what I have come up with is an 8 out of 10 for the entire update. It is very good, a very inspiring update, and having added the bonus benefit of no bots due to the recent ban wave, I think this is one of the most fun times to play Team Fortress 2 within the last decade. I hope that you have enjoyed this review ride and would love to hear your opinion. Of course, if you've enjoyed, subscribing and leaving a like would immensely help the channel. As always, uh, I will catch you about exactly 365 days from this point when they release the next summer update. <laughs>